Hello everybody, it's me Nia. This feels so weird. I have not done a proper sit down setup video for the longest time, but I really thought I had to share with you the story time of why I had to call the police and the car breakdown story from hell. It was literally a nightmare. Let me set the scene for you. I'm in London for uni and I have my car up here because it's only a two and a half hour journey. It's a really nice drive. If I need to go home for any- I didn't get that. Could you try again? No. If something happens with like the guinea pigs or something, I can literally just nip home and not have to worry about trains. There's so many train strikes in London. It's just nice knowing that I can drive home whenever I need. So I'm in this two and a half hour journey and I'm really desperate for the toilet. I keep going past services and I'm like, no, it's fine. I'm only like an hour away from home. I'll be fine. I get 20 minutes from home. A complicated by Avril Lavigne came on. I was loving it and suddenly my car just stopped. It feels like the wind has been knocked out of it. I don't know, I was just driving along absolutely fine, no issue, and it went like vroom. Can you imagine me and my little Peugeot like creep into the side of the road, with my little hazards on, like, oh my god, what is going on? My car has had so many issues. Stuff like when I ran out of petrol, but it wasn't my fault. Basically, I had a faulty petrol meter. The reading was wrong, and it said I had petrol when I literally ran out. My car was on a dangerous part of the road. This is not the first time this has happened to me. My dad had to come up behind me and like nudge me along the road. So this was like the back of my car and this was the front of his car. He was like nudging me along. It must have looked so funny from everyone else on the road. I had to replace the radiator. It was all leaky. I had the stoplight come on so many times. I had to get a whole new clutch. I've had loads of welding done. I mean, MOT day was always a dread. Like how much money am I going to spend this time, you know? I have spent a small fortune on that car and it does hurt my heart and soul a little bit. No slander to my old car. I love that car so much. It was my first car. I had it since I was 17. It's literally 22 years old and it's done really well for itself. It's got amazing mileage. I've basically replaced every original part in that car. Oh, I just love it so much. I'm alone on the side of the road, this really fast road. Every single time a car was going past, it felt like an earthquake. So I FaceTimed my dad like, almost in tears. He's like, hey, it's fine, don't worry. You're on the RIC, just give him a ring. So I phoned the RIC and they tell me to phone the police. Now I have never phoned the police in my life. I don't know why, but I expected to be on hold because every time I've ever had to phone anything like that ever, like 111, there's always such a huge wait time, but obviously it's literally the emergency number. You have an operator first. So I'm like offloading my problems to the operator and she's like, do you want police, ambulance or firefighters? I'm like, I want the police. And I'm almost at tears at this point. I'm like, the RAC have told me to phone you. I'm really sorry. And I get these two lovely policemen. I've literally got a video. I've got so many clips I can just insert. I'm getting wobbled every time a car goes past. I've already cried. I phoned the RAC. They told me to phone the police. The police are on their way. The RAC <laughs> are on their way. I don't know why. I had this Snapchat filter on my face. And I was sending a video to someone. And the police arrived at that exact time. The RAC. The police are here. Oh my God. So the police arrived, they were really, really lovely. I had my own personal traffic light system. So they put cones around my car so that everyone stopped shaking my car when they went past. And they were like going like, stop, come along. I feel like royalty. I've gone from my car having an earthquake every single time a car comes past to literally having my own personal traffic light system with the police. I've got cones surrounding my car. People are having to go around the cones. This is amazing. I felt so stupid when they told me to phone the police, but I'm so glad I did. While the police are doing their thing, the RIC guy phones me, he's like, I'll be 20 minutes. Please keep checking in. They're like, how long is he going to be? Does he have an ETA? And I was like, it could literally be any time from now. He was not 20 minutes. He was at least 40 minutes. And I felt really bad because they kept saying like, when's he going to be here? I think maybe a little over an hour after I'd first called them, the RIC man arrived and he connected me to a bar and I had to sit in my car and steer while he towed me to a lay-by so that it was safe for him to actually look at my car without all the cars going past. And also so that the police could go do what they needed to do. I felt so bad, but there's nothing I could really do, you know? I just had to sit in my car. It's not like I can go and direct the traffic myself. He opened the bonnet and told me to start the engine and I did that and he just went, oh no, you might have to get your whole engine reconstructed. And I was like, is that expensive? He's like, I don't think it's even worth it. My heart sank because I've replaced so much that I'm just used to replacing it. Every time I had the panic, I'm gonna have to get a new car. We always found a way around it. So I've never actually thought properly, I'm gonna have to get rid of this car. It's always been like, it's fine, we'll just fix it. It's fine, we'll just fix it. But this was something that wasn't even worth fixing. This happened on Friday. By the time we got to the garage, it was shut. So I had to wait till Monday to get their opinion on it. And they confirmed that yes, the timing belt had snapped and I will have to get my engine reconstructed. And they said it could have been around five to 600 or up to 800 pounds to get this fixed. Now I love Penny. That car was so important to me but I don't love it 800 pounds worth. In my head I knew I had to get a new car and that this car was a little bit done. They ask you how you are you just have to say that you're 
fine when you're not really fine. I mean, it is really sad. The RAC guy was saying like, it's such a shame. This car has such good mileage. There's nothing we really could have done. It wasn't my fault at all, he said. It just, this stuff happens sometimes. It could happen with any car. I just got really unlucky. At this point, we're still in a lay-by. Obviously my car can't start, so he has to hoist my car onto the back of his van and I have to sit in the van with him while he drives us to the garage. While we're driving back, I'm thinking, I need a new car. I've never bought a car. My dad got the other car as a gift for me and my brother to learn how to drive in. I've never done this before. I don't even know where to start. So I'm asking him, do you have an idea of what kind of car I should be looking for? He said that Citroen C1s are really good. Not to go for the newer ones. He said to go for, like he said 2012 was a good year. Bit random, but my dad literally found a 2012 Citroen C1 out of sheer luck, an advert for it, like really close by. My dad was the absolute sweetest because obviously for the meantime I did need some wheels and I am insured on my family car which is not like a small car it's this seven seater like family wagon because I did have work the next morning at six the only thing was that this car hadn't been driven for a while so I was a little bit nervous about starting it so I had my boyfriend Joe standing at the door while I started it just for like a bit of moral support it started fine everything was all good so I unwound the window I was like all good Joe and I got ready to go off and I started winding the window back up but it wouldn't go back up. It was stuck down. So I was just thinking, don't panic. It's fine. Surely nothing else can be going wrong. Like maybe it just needs to wake up. I'll drive it to work and it'll be fine. So I'm driving to work. I'm being pummeled by this freezing cold, crisp morning air, which was nice, but freezing cold. I get to work, I'm trying to do it back up and it's still not going back up. So again, a little theme going on. I panic and FaceTime my dad, which luckily he actually answered. He's like being so understanding. He's like, look, there's not a lot you can do. Just park it by a hedge and just hope for the best. Everything was fine, I finished my shift. The only thing was, it had started raining during my shift, so the seat was really soggy, which was not nice. But I got home and we managed to get the window up somehow. I mean, there was like a tactic where you had to like open the door and like do it up. We managed to do it, and me and Joe set off to go look at this Citroen C1 that my dad had found on the advert the night before. The guy gave me keys to go look at this car and I literally fell in love with it. Oh my God, it's so cute. It's a little bit smaller than my old car, so it's perfect for living in London, like it feels more of a city car. And the fuel economy is really good, so it's it's perfect for doing those long journeys to and from uni. Then me and Joe test drove it. We had the stereo booming, the AC on, Joe was just fiddling with all the buttons. It was just so much fun. Even though they said they never changed the price from the original listed price, I managed to wangle 500 pounds off of that asking price because I just am a negotiation master. I just must have really charmed them. Then I bought the car. They gave me a 12 month MOT, which they fixed anything that was wrong with it. Gave me a full service, a year of the AA, a three month warranty, and they gave me free home delivery, which was really handy, and probably a bunch of other stuff, which I literally just can't remember. But all of this has meant that I've had to scrap Penny the Peugeot. I'm a little bit upset. But on Monday, they did deliver my new car straight to my front door. So now I've got CC the Citroen, which I'm sure you'll see in future videos. I might film a car tour. It's just weird to think that I drove home on Friday in Penny and I drove back on Monday in CC. Like, it just feels weird. It doesn't feel like it's my car yet. I love her. I'm obsessed. She has got these sweet little girl racer stripes, which at first I really didn't like, but they're kind of growing on me now. I feel like it adds a bit of personality and character, and it means that, like, if I'm parked in a car park and I can't find it, I'll be able to find her. She's got those stripes. Also, I don't have my black box anymore, which is so nice. I got insurance without a black box, which just makes me feel so much more relaxed. Not like I'm a crazy driver. I will still be sticking to the speed limit. I've just heard some really bad black box horror stories. Like this girl drove to a concert with her friend and for some reason her black box glitched and told her she was driving like over 100 miles an hour and she got her insurance cancelled. So I just feel so relieved that nothing like that is going to happen to me now. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Comment down below what your first car was and I'll see you next time.